Hello students. Today I am talking about the some more concepts of pharmacodynamics uh, which I have not included in the part 2. So, I have named it as a part 3 and in this part uh, we will understand the drugs if drug effects and uh, these drug effects on the various uh, combination of drugs uh, what kind of effects are coming up right and uh, the science behind why we need to do these combinations what is the uh, reason what is the mechanism behind these combinations right what is the objective behind this combination of drugs and uh, how it works right so that we will understand through this and I hope the uh, pharmacodynamics part 2 and 1 you have understood well. So, that uh, platform will help you out to understand uh, these concepts now. So, let us see the uh, drug effects. First is the combined effect of drugs. So, we have to know that uh, when we combine two or more drugs together and uh, give it to patient. So, what is our objective? Why we do that? And if we do that, which way these drugs are going to produce their effect? Okay. So, when two or more drugs are given simultaneously or in quick succession. So, here combined means it is not combined means is not added together, mixed together. It, it may be or may not be. So, here it is like a simultaneous use or in quick succession, right. So, you have given one drug, then again you have given immediately another drug. So, that we also call it as a combined effect. Uh, and these drugs uh, have the different effect when we combine together, even your objective may be different and their effects may be different. So, uh, either you will get a synergism through, through that combination or you may get the antagonism through that combination. So, uh, when we deliberately combine these drugs for achieving the synergism or antagonism is fine, but if we are not deliberately combining for this, while we combine it for other reason, but we get the synergism or antagonism. So, these kind of things comes under the ADRs, uh, right, adverse drug reactions, later uh, we will discuss more on it. So, uh, usually when these drugs get uh, get into your body, uh, they have two ways of uh, interacting with each other and also affecting uh, one drug uh, by the other in, in the body itself. So, they do it by two ways, one either they interact through pharmacokinetic method or they interact through pharmacodynamic level, right. So, pharmacokinetical level if they interact means you know very well when you have taken the drug, drug goes into your body by the absorption right it once it absorbs uh, it reaches into the system and after reaching to the system it will go for uh, distribution of the different part or uh, different tissues in your body during that time metabolism uh, the effect will also come and then the metabolism will happen and after that excretion will go on so the, this way the pharmacokinetic happens so what happens sometimes when you take these two drugs together the one drug may change the pharmacokinetical uh, means any level of pharmacokinetics of the other drug, right? Either it will increase the uh, absorption or it may decrease the absorption, it may increase the distribution, it may decrease the distribution, right? Uh, it may increase the metabolism. A uh, lot of time it happens the, uh, the you know, the effect of one drug on the other drug on the basis of metabolism, right? Either they increase the metabolism or they decrease the metabolism, right? Same way, uh, when, when these effects comes, the concentration on the site of action also changes, right. Same way, uh, the elimination rate is also changing. So, all these effects, the, uh, you know, the duration of the action of the drug, the onset of the action of the drug and the intensity of the action of the drug, uh, how fast the drug achieves the plasma level, that changes. Uh, what is the T half of the drug that changes, right. So, uh, there are so many factors which which are the pharmacokinetic factors are getting affected by the uh, by the you know effect of one drug on the other drug. So, either it may be synergism or it may be antagonism and there are various examples uh, you might have seen where uh, we deliberately combine the two drugs for achieving this. 
for example i tell you one example you might have seen <clears throat> whenever the calcium tablets uh, been prescribed usually especially especially for the geriatrics and the pediatric uh, patients uh, they they are not always the calcium carbonate only but that is a calcium carbonate added with vitamin d3 or calcitriol so what the vitamin d3 they are combined with it, it not the reason that they have deficit of the vitamin d3 while the vitamin d3 role is little different here so vitamin d3 or the calcitriol this is an activated form of vitamin d3 will be added with the calcium just to achieve the highest absorption of the calcium into the body right when they take it the oral route the calcium uh, and uh, the vitamin d3 and calcitriol acts as a launch pad for the uh, calcium to go into the body right like that these combinations uh, we, we we make it to achieve certain kind of uh, effect either it is synergism or maybe antagonism we'll discuss later here uh, i i'll tell you these uh, synergism by the uh, or antagonism by this mathematical formula uh, it's very easy to understand uh, see uh, we call it these interaction either addition addition synergism potentiation or antagonism actually addition and potentiation both are the type of synergism only so what happens here when we say addition means one drug he has uh, you know when two drugs combined uh, uh, together uh, they they have the added uh, value or added effect so what it is mean uh, it means if the one drug el uh, response elicited by a combined drug is equal to the combined response of the individual drug means if a one drug having the effect 1 which is written there you can see uh, if the one drug having the effect 1 and the other drug is also having the effect 1 and when you give together it will become 2 right it's not become 3 it's not become uh, 1 it become 2 means what is the effect of one drug and what is the effect of other drug you will get the added effect of that drug right you won't get less or more so that is we call it as an addition okay so 1 plus 1 is equal to 2 here so equal to the combined response of the individual drug okay uh, another term which we call it synergism addition is also type of synergism but synergism here uh, we can understand in this way that the response elicited by combined drug is greater than the combined response of the individual drug right so here if you give drug 1 and another drug 1 as a separately you will get the effect 1 and effect 1 but if you combine them together you will get the effect 3 so what happened it means the they the, when you combine them together they have produced more effect than their own individual effect right even their uh, their added effect uh, will be more than their individual effects okay so this is called greater than the combined response potentiation is a drug uh, it means a drug which has no effect enhance the effect of second drug means like you have combined two drugs together a and b so in that maybe drug a has no effect and drug b has the effect but you have added the a drug with the b because a helping b for uh, getting the response so here you can see 0 plus 1 is equal to 2 means the drug first drug has no effect but once added with the uh, other drug it produces uh, 2 right so that's what uh, here you can see it produces 2 so one drug has no effect enhances the effect of second drug antagonism uh, already i have explained before in the uh, part 2 uh, drug inhibits the effect of another drug right so here one drug inhibiting the effect of another drug like there are various type of antagonism we will discuss in the coming slides so uh, here you can see one plus one one may be your antagonist and one another one may be your agonist so their response will become zero okay so usually uh, the antagonist has no uh, intrinsic activity as you know well so antagonist has no effect but once it combined with the agonist it makes the agonist effect also uh, zero right so like that it works here 
Now we will see uh, in detail what the synergism uh, means here. When the action of one drug is facilitated or increased by the other, so you concentrate here in two words, facilitated and increased, right. So here either one drug is facilitating the effect of other drug or increasing the effect of other drug, then we call it as a synergistic effect, okay. So synergistic always it does not mean always it is increasing it, but even facilitating it is also called synergism. Only it should not inhibit it. If it is not inhibit, if it is inhibiting, that is not a synergism, right. So, only synergism means always a positive synergism we consider as a positive. So, either it is facilitating or it is increasing. In a synergistic pair, both the drugs can have action in the same direction. This is also very important. One drug should not oppose the other drug, otherwise it is not a synergism, it will become as an antagonism. So, both has to uh, produce the effect in the same direction, right. If one drug blocking the COX-2 and relieving your pain, so other drug also should do uh, in, in the uh, same process to, I mean same effect it should produce, right, maybe by other method but it should produce the same effect, right, uh, means to relieve your pain. Or given alone, uh, one may be inactive. Now, second, another condition is one may be inactive and another is active. So, one is enhancing the effects of other one, right, as we have seen in case of potentiation. So, the, the potentiation is also a type of synergism. Synergism can be additive and supra additive. So, you, it can be additive or it can be supra additive, okay which we super additive which we call it as potentiation, right. So, we will see, first we will see additive, the effect of the two drugs is in the same direction and simply adds up. What happens here? Effect of drug A plus B, this is a combination, this is your combination here, A plus B. What it gives? It gives the effect of drug A plus the effect of drug B. So, once you combine two drugs, their effects are also get combined and gives you the uh, combined eff uh, effect as well, okay. Side effects of the components of an additive pair may be different, do not add up. So, here effects are adding up, but does not mean, it is not sure, it is not same always that the side effects can also add up, okay. Thus, the combination is better tolerated than higher dose of one component. So, it means what? That, that's why that is also one of the objective. Sometime uh, the drugs individually produces more side effects, but when we combine them together, their side effects also minimized, right? And that is why uh, we sometimes use uh, the combination drugs, right? Uh, it's better to combine them together. So. Be, in spite of getting the individual side effects of those drugs, you can get a combined side effect that will be lesser than the uh, their individual side effects, right. So, this is also one of the objective. Here are some examples, always keep in mind that uh, there are n number of examples for this, but there are some I am quoting here. Uh, you can see the aspirin. Uh, and paracetamol you can find in the market quite easily the aspirin and paracetamol combination uh, they both are having the you know additive effect right so analgesic and antipyretic effect you are getting through this another is uh, in case of general anesthesia when you, they want to give the general anesthesia they use the nitric ox nitrous oxide added with the halothane so that also gives the additive effect Amylodipine plus atenolol, they are both uh, used in the anti as an antihypertensive drugs. So, they, they are also producing the additive response. Glibinclamide and metformin, they, they are also uh, used together for uh, diabetes patients uh, producing hypoglycemic effect. Ephedrine and theophylline as a bronchodilator, so both are uh, producing the bronchodilation effect. So, when you need little more effect or with the lesser side effects, you try to combine ephedrine with the theophylline, right. So, this is, these are the example of the additive combinations. Supra additive, which we also call it as potentiation, the effect of combination is greater than the individual effect of the component, right. 
so what uh, a, a, you can understand this way effect of drug a plus b so this is again your combination a plus b so it gives more uh, effect of drug a plus b producing more effect of drug a plus effect of drug b right means F, uh, their combination gives you can see here it's a more than sign is there so it produces more than the effect of drug a plus effect of drug b okay is always the case when component is inactive as such so usually in case when maybe either drug a or drug b will be inactive okay so drug a will be inactive drug b may be inactive anyone so one will be inactive one will be active but ultimately what you will get f more effect of drug a plus effect of drug b here some examples of supra additive or the potentiation drugs uh, very very ex uh, good examples uh, common examples acetylcholine with physostigmine right in third year you will do the ex uh, experiment on the this combination acetylcholine and physostigmine when you add the acetylcholine and physostigmine together what happens the physostigmine <coughs> saves the acetylcholine from degradation so the acetylcholine will be available little more uh, in the nerve endings so when acetylcholine will be available in higher concentration the the effect of acetylcholine will rise right so that what physostigmine does it's in it protects the acetylcholine from the natural degradation by the choline esterase enzymes right so like that it does same way levodopa and carbidopa is there uh, this combination uh, inhibits of the peripheral metabolism right and uh, uh, and gives the more uh, concentration of levodopa adrenaline plus cocaine and despiramine this is also very very uh, important example here sulfamethoxazole and trimethoprim uh, it's uh, this combination is available in the market antihypertensive and uh, added with the hydrochlorothiazide so like that these are the super additive drug combinations please uh, remember these examples are very important examples super additive or the potentiation examples right so now uh, this was the synergism you understood how the synergism happens uh, either by the method of additive uh, either they produce the additive effect or they produce the super additive effect now we'll see antagonism right because when we combine the two drugs together there is a chance that uh, uh, in one case it may produce synergism another case no effect third eff third case is antagonism right so where one drug is inhibiting the effect of another drug so when one drug decreases or abolishes the action of another they are said to be antagonistic right you can see here effect of drug a plus b is lesser than the effect of drug a plus effect of drug b so here the sign is less than sign right usually in an antagonistic pair one drug is inactive as such but decreases the effect of the other drug you know very very well that the antagonist has uh, has no its own effect right no effect by its own because it doesn't have the intrinsic activity so it is kind of inactive drug in in that case not producing any uh, their own effect but it combined together it reduces the effect of the other drug okay this is called antagonism here we have a different type of antagonism physical antagonism means a drug which uh, decreases the effect of other drug because of its physical nature <laughs> So what happens here based on the physical properties of the drug example charcoal adsorbs alkaloids and can prevent their absorption used in alkaloidal poisoning so this is because you know the charcoal is an adsorptive drug so it does uh, it it inhibits the another drug's effect because of its adsorptive property second is the chemical antagonism here one drug react chemically and form an inactive product right so it react with another chemical and make it inactive for example KMnO4 oxidizes alkaloids this is one example because these alkaloids are used for the gastric leverage in poisoning tannins plus alkaloids if you combine together it becomes insoluble alkaloidal tannates is formed chelating agents uh, complex toxic metals nitrites from methemoglobin which reacts with cyanide radical 
So, these are some chemical antagonism where the one chemical antagonizes other chemical. Drugs may react when mixture in the same cell. This is another very, very important point to understand you all that uh, sometimes what happens there are practices we uh, the nurses and the uh, they, they combine two drugs together in one syringe. Right? In some cases it is safe, but it is not very, very much recommended always. So, uh, there also when you mix these two drugs either in the syringe or in the infusion bottle, there is a huge chance that they may interact with each other, right. So, uh, for examples of such interactions are thiopentone sodium succinylcholine chloride. If you are combining these two drugs together, they, they, they interact uh, with each other, they react with each other. Penicillin G sodium with the succinylcholine chloride, heparin with penicillin or tetracycline or streptomycin or hydrocortisone. So, like that uh, they, they, these combinations or uh, the mixing it together in one syringe is not being recommended. Another uh, antagonism is called physiological or the functional antagonism. This is also a very important one means one drug which is not related to other drug, but it is producing uh, the their physiological responses. Suppose that one drug has one physiological response. When we added the two drugs together, the other drug is by other way inhibiting that physiological response. For example, uh, I will tell you the example you may be more clear. So, it means what these uh, the two drugs have the pharmacological effect in opposite direction that is you always keep in mind these two drugs have the pharmacological effect in opposite directions. Uh, right, you have seen in synergism it is compulsory to have in same direction here it is compulsory to have in opposite direction if they are functional antagonists. So, I take you one example here histamine and adrenaline on bronchial muscle and blood pressure. So, uh, histamine which acts through H receptor have the different mechanism of action, adrenaline acts on alpha and beta receptors have the different mechanism of action, both drug belong to different classes histamine belongs to histaminergic class, adrenaline belongs to adrenergic class right. So, their classes are different, their mechanism of action are different, their receptors are different, but their effects are antagonistic with each other right. Histamine uh, it causing the bronchoconstriction on the bronchial muscle while the adrenaline causes the dilation right. So, uh, this way uh, even in the body both are the indigenous components in our body, histamine also produced in our body, adrenaline also produced in our body. So, when our histaminic uh, responses are little higher, automatically body releases adrenaline and uh, controls the histaminic responses right in the bronchial muscle because bronchial muscles uh, constriction uh, can lead to the death right. So, uh, that is what the adrenaline is saving uh, on that condition. So, like that uh, even from you can give it outside and manage this condition. So, like that uh, this called the physiological or functional antagonism. Another example is hydrochlorothiazide and trimetrine on urinary potassium excretion. Glucagon and insulin on blood sugar level you know very well that what the glucagon does and insulin does both are having antagonistic effect on the blood sugar level right. Next is the receptor antagonism this part we will take uh, much in detail uh, after um, the in the new presentation. So, one drug uh, which you call antagonist blocks the receptor action of the other agonist here antagonist uh, uh, are playing their role through receptors right blocking their receptors inhibiting the uh, affinity of the agonist into the receptor like that they are playing their role right and also this is a antagonism. So, receptor antagonism can be competitive or non-competitive already this point I have been explained in the pharmacodynamics part 2 uh, I think part 1 yeah. So, these are the general classes of antagonists, chemical antagonist, physiological antagonist and pharmacological antagonist already discussed all this. Now, we will move to the new uh, next uh, next topic which is uh, another very important is called tolerance right. It refers to the requirement of higher dose of a drug to produce a given response means what? Suppose that you are taking a one drug, uh, one painkiller of the 100 uh, mg uh, dose right. So, it gives you the effect but you are taking it quite often and uh, you are taking it uh, for longer duration right. So, what happens slowly uh, you the 100 milligram of the drug is not producing the same uh, intensity of response right. You would not get 
relieve your pain uh, in the in, in the same on in the same duration of action or in the same onset of action all right or maybe it won't relieve the pain so what you what it happens slowly you need to increase the doses then you you need uh, more dose than the 100 milligram or maybe more frequently you need it so uh, this is what now your body started tolerating it tolerance is a is a word where there is no effect or there is a there is a less effect or there is a no response for example i take, take another way suppose that you have been troubled by somebody and uh, you are not uh, first thing either that is not affecting you much or it is affected but you are not responding to that unless until you are not responding it is always considered as that you are more tolerant right so you are tolerant one day when you will react your tolerance has gone okay so here what is happening the drugs are not responding they stopped responding or the body has stopped responding for the drug it means the body started tolerating it now so no effect no response comes means tolerance has been increased now or tolerance has been developed now so loss of therapeutic efficacy for example sulfonylureas in type 2 diabetes which is form of tolerance is often called refractoriness <clears throat> Tolerance is widely occurring adaptive biological phenomena. Another is very, very important term here. Tolerance is an adaptive biological phenomena, right? Means adaptation is a biological phenomena. Always understand that adaptation is a biological phenomena. In all over the nature, the, the adaptation or adoption word is there, right? So nature may, makes the balance uh, with the with the other natural things by the adaptation method what the human being does human being has uh, re uh, replaced this uh, adaptation word with the uh, with the compromise so here the word compromise is a negative term while the adaptation is always a positive term so we should learn how to adapt and same way body is the natural component so body is always not compromising body is always adapting right so whatever the condition is given if you're taking one drug continuously 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 then body will develop a method to deal with this drug that's called the tolerance right maybe body uh, understands the mechanism of that drug and slowly body will rise their uh, excretion and will once the drug goes into the body body will excrete it out faster so like that body has adapted with it so that adaptation is just a natural phenomena other to drug tolerance may be natural and the acquired. So these tolerance can be natural or this tolerance can be acquired as well. So uh, what is the meaning of the natural tolerance? Natural tolerance means there are some people, they are by birth, they are tolerant for certain drugs, right? Maybe their genetic, genetic makeup is such, their proteinaceous and, uh, structures are such, right? By some reason, they are naturally tolerant for certain drugs, right? Uh, for example, rabbits are tolerant to atropine. Black races are tolerant to midriatics, right? That's why you might have seen that certain drugs, uh, effect of certain drugs in Africa is different and India is different, or Africa is different and Australia is different. So likewise, they, they, the people of the region are having the kind of similar genetic makeup and accordingly their response to certain drugs are different, right? So that's what they, some people are, they naturally tolerant for certain drugs some individuals in any population are hyper responders to certain drugs and same way there are some people which are hyper responders even a small dose of the drug can give a good uh, or high response to them right so that is also the case that is also the case of the natural tolerance or the natural response uh, acquired responses are like uh, when the patient is taking the drug frequently and uh, in quick successions and for the longer period of time then I told you the body adapts it so this is called as the acquired acquired uh, tolerance this is called as the acquired tolerance now uh, there are the three examples uh, I'm quoting here for the tolerance uh, before that I want to tell you one thing Sometimes a drug has multiple response or multiple effect in the body. And if the body gets 
tolerant for that drug it doesn't mean the body is get tolerant for all the effects of the drug right for example uh, paracetamol produces analgesic as well as antipyretic effect means it relieves the pain as well as it relieves the uh, fever maybe your body get tolerant for the pain effect of the paracetamol but not the fever effect means uh, the paracetamol will be able to relieve the fever but may not be able to relieve the pain so body has developed the tolerance for certain effects of the drug but not the all effects of the drug right so that is also the case here are some examples uh, for this tolerance develops to sedative action of chlorpromazine but not to its antipsychotic action so you know the chlorpromazine you, you may not know you will know later when i'll talk about the drugs used in cns so uh, there you know the chlor chlorpromazine uh, have the two kind of effects sedative effect as well as antipsychotic effect so maybe the tolerance can be of any one kind of effect tolerance occurs to the sedative action of phenobarbitone but not as the, as much to its anti epileptic action so phenobarbitone is a drug used for sedation and anti epileptic action so here also that thing is possible tolerance occurs to analgesic and euphoric reaction action of morphine but not as much as to its constipating and my myotic actions so this way uh, the the one effect can be get tolerant tolerated by the body but not the other may may or may not be this is another very important term called cross tolerance cross tolerance means uh, later you will uh, learn one more term called cross resistance that is also happening with the same way cross tolerance means it is the development of tolerance to pharmacologically related drugs means if you have the drugs which are related pharmacologically or chemically they are means they are of the closer category of drugs similar type of drugs so they may produce uh, if you if the body is tolerating one drug maybe the tolerance automatically de develops for the other drug also right same thing is happening in case of the uh, resistance also okay alcoholics are relatively tolerant to barbiturates and general anesthetics so here if alcoholics are tolerant for barbiturates so they may be tolerant for general anesthetics as well closer the two groups and uh, here as closer the drug groups are more complete is the cross tolerance right then uh, as they are close with each other their tolerance will be more there is a partial cross tolerance between morphine and barbiturates but complete cross tolerance between morphine and pethidine so these are the very good examples to uh, you know remember now uh, how this tolerance actually happens right so there are very interesting um, mechanisms how this uh, tolerance happens actually we don't know exactly we have some theory some some idea that this might happens but we don't have any concrete idea behind that how actually concrete uh, uh, evidence how it is happening so uh, first way is the pharmacokinetic or drug disposition tolerance it means what the effective concentration of the drug at the site of action is decreasing means what happening here because of the pharmacokinetic changes right so the drug is not able to reach in sufficient concentration to the site of action right maybe a drug body has changed its metabolism body has changed the uh, protein binding body has changed the elimination rate of the elimination right so any of the reason the drug is not reaching enough to the site of action then there will be no effect so that's why you need more doses in that case to get that effect right for example in chronic use of barbiturates carbamazepine amphetamine these kind of effects has been observed another is the pharmacodynamic or cellular clear tolerance in this case what is happening uh, cells of the target organ become less responsive right now the drug is there but is not the cell is not responding to that drug properly right for example it happens in morphine barbiturates nitrates 
so these these kind of things are happening usually because of the receptors of that particular cell which are actually receiving the drug and the process of effect starts so the receptors are not responding to the drug right either the receptors got desensitized receptors got damaged receptors got uh, masked receptors got internalized got inside the cell so many a reason uh, behind behind this but ultimately uh, maybe only there are 10 receptors which are acting towards the drug but now there are five so the response is getting down it means also in that case you need more drug to get more effect from those five receptors right, right? So like that anything which happens because of the pharmacodynamic or cellular that is called the pharmacodynamic or cellular tolerance. Another very important term which you have uh, seen in the part 2 tachyphylaxis so is the rapid development of tolerance right rapid development of tolerance usually tolerance develops in uh, weeks and months maybe years but here tachyphylaxis may develop in hours and the days. So, what is happening uh, here when doses of a drug repeated in quick succession result in marked reduction in response, right? That is also happening sometimes. This is usually seen with the indirectly acting drugs such as the ephedrine, tyramine, nicotine. So, what these drugs are doing actually, these drugs act by releasing catecholamines in the body. So, you know, ephedrine, tyramine, nicotine they are indirectly acting and increasing the catecholamine release catecholamines really catecholamines means either you are talking about norepinephrine dopamine noradrenaline adrenaline they all are the catecholamines so they are increasing the uh, you know their release but what happens they are increasing the release but the synthesis is not happening with the same rate so what happens the their stores where where it synthesizes and stores the stores have been depleted out so they uh, even if you give the drug uh, there is no catecholamine to release so the, the, that will not release and the effect of the drug will not be there so that is also uh, the case where immediately uh, the tolerance develops there are some other mechanisms like slow dissociation of the drug from its receptor so usually what is a combination uh, normal pattern when the drug binds with the receptor once the receptor produces its response the drug molecule has to move out from the receptor and it will be available for another drug molecule but some some cases these drug molecule moves out or displaces from the receptor very slow so because it displaces very slow the other drug molecule will not come and bind in the time and so the response will grow slower right so that is also the case of the tachyphylaxis happens <clears throat> now another very important term that's called the drug dependence you know there are people who whom you have seen in movies and all there are people who are taking the drugs they become drug addicts so why they take the drugs what, why what is the purpose uh, why they do that right so this is called the dependence they are dependent on the drug uh, and this dependence is sometime psychological sometime physical so i will tell you later what are these two different type of dependence uh, so what usually these drugs are doing uh, they are elevating the mood and producing a feeling of well-being right you are you you inside of you you are feeling good you are feeling yes there is no problem that's called the euphoria euphoria means a feeling of false well-being right you are not means well-being means when everything is fine suppose that somebody has uh, has lost some something very drastically in his life right maybe he lost some person maybe lost some money some some stuff seriously so something gone uh, messy around him maybe a uh, colleague of him has been dumped him maybe the girlfriend of him has dumped uh, dumped him right maybe the boyfriend has dumped him so uh, anything or maybe a friend has dumped him so something happening around which is messy and uh, the person is feeling really bad so if they get these kind of drugs so for, for a mean, meanwhile for the for time being they are feeling good they are feeling dissociated from the surrounding or they are they are feeling dissociated from those 
events or situations which are happening around them so they feel good for that period of time but after that once the effect has effect will go off again they'll come into the same situation and they feel that everything is so bad so they are started craving for the same same well-being what they have felt before some time because the situation is not changing it is again the same so they are thinking that if i'll get that uh, drug again i will feel better so like that kind of they become dependent on that particular drug right drug dependence is a state in which use of drug for personal satisfaction is accorded a higher priority so they feel most of the time they don't want the drug to produce some effect what purpose it is but they want their self self satisfaction right so uh, and this uh, self satisfaction is the highest priority for them than other basic needs often in the face of known risk to health even they know that these drugs are going to damage something serious to them but their satisfaction for time being is the highest priority so now we'll see uh, there are different terms uh, comes under it which explains this dependence in a better way one is called physiological psychological dependence so it it is said to have developed when the individual believes that optimal state of well being is achieved only through the action of the drug so this is what they they think like i cannot improve the situation by myself nobody can do it for me right so only this is the drug which uh, gives me some happiness or gives me the feeling of well being so this is what their psychological that this drug is drugs effect is really you know helping me so that gives them a psychological dependence right they they depend on this drug psychologically it may start as uh, liking for the drug effect and may progress to compulsive drug use in some individuals so st it starts slowly you are liking the drug effect then you will compelled by yourself to take that drug the intensity of psychological dependence may vary from desire to craving and slowly uh, uh, initially it is a desire that if you get it is good you will feel good and after some time you you will get you know you start craving for getting that drug okay that is called the you know the addiction obviously certain degree of psychological dependence accompanies in all pattern of self medication this is also very very sensitive point to think of the people who go for the self medication uh, just two years ago one of your uh, seniors uh, jiva sixth sixth from the jiva sandra uh, they have done one self medication uh, survey under me and uh, it was a serious serious condition uh, the data has presented a serious condition we have done in the this region itself so a huge number of people are doing the self medication right and even without having a basic knowledge of the drugs so usually they have their uh, one kind of psychological dependence by themselves and some degree of uh, self satisfaction they come and take it the self medication another term is called reinforcement is the ability of the drug to produce effects that may the user wish to take it again or to induce drug seeing behavior so Uh, here this is called reinforcement so drug is reinforcing on the patient that the patient will take it again and again and relying on its effect right certain drugs opioids cocaine are strong reinforcers while the benzodiazepines are weak reinforcers right faster the drug acts more reinforcing it is right so you, that people what they need they need a faster effect what for they are craving if it gets immediately they they are feeling very good so those drugs which are producing faster effect uh, are more reinforced other than the psychological dependence we have another term called physical dependence so what is happening here it is an altered physiological state right produced by separated administration of a drug which necessitates the continued presence of the drug to maintain psychological equilibrium Uh, phys uh, physiological equilibrium so what happens uh, sometime people i have seen people you know some of the people who who take the alcohol and they feel that after taking the alcohol their performance increases or they, they, their uh, 
mind works faster or their hand works their body reacts in a faster way so i i some way they they feel like their physical activity is because of the drugs effect right so they they physically depend on the drug discontinuation of the drug results in a characteristic withdrawal syndrome and in some cases it is happening right once they discontinue the drug their uh, withdrawal symptoms are coming in they get tremors they get uh, uh, mental claudication they get confusions they get uh, uh, what called lethargy or so certain kind of uh, withdrawal symptoms will be there so these withdrawal symptoms may be difficult to handle so that's why they uh, they feel like okay it's better to continue keep to continuing uh, the drug like since the essence of the process is the adaptation of the nervous system to function normally in the presence of the drug it has been called neuro adaptation <clears throat> usually this all is psychologically happening by some ways and then uh, <clears throat> physiological responses are also changing uh, that's why we call it as a neuro adaptation drug producing physical dependence are opioids barbiturates and other depressants including alcohols and benzodiazepines stimulant drug example amphetamines cocaine produce little or no physical dependence so the different drugs are having the different uh, way of producing the you know effects now the last term which i want to discuss with you here that is the drug abuse right so uh, so don't confuse with these terms what i have uh, told you the tolerance uh, the dependence and the drug abuse right so these all are different terms uh, refers to use of a drug by self medication in a manner the amount that devo- deviates from the approval proved medical and social pattern in a given culture at a given time so here you are first thing uh, abuse is also that when somebody is taking the drug not for its pharmacological action it means not for its known pharmacological action suppose that a drug which is need for relieving psychosis or the depression depression but it gives the uh, sleepiness or the sleep so people are not taking it for antidepressant purpose but are taking it for the sleep purpose so what is happening this is a drug abuse you they are abusing the drug same way uh, even the doses suppose that the recommended dose is 100 mg but to achieve more effect they take it 200 mg or 500 mg so that is what happening they are abusing the drug so there is both cases this is called abuse the term conveys social disapproval of the manner and pro- purpose of drug use okay so this is called the drug abuse amphetamine cocaine cannabis lsd are drugs which produces addiction but little or no physical dependence so they are not producing physical dependence but they are producing the addiction right addiction which you can call it as a psychological dependence right on the other hand drugs like nalorfen produces physical dependence without importing addiction okay so there are the different drugs having the different effect on the body uh, one more term left here is the drug habituation now and the this is another term called drug habituation uh, means the people get habitual of certain drugs right uh, for example okay the examples will come here uh, it denotes less in- intensive involvement with the drugs so that all withdrawal produces only mild discomfort so here uh, they are not da- that dangerous the habituation but uh, of course uh, uh, if it is habitual if a person is habitual and you withdraw this mild withdrawal symptoms will always be produced Uh, for example uh, even consumption of tea coffee eh, tobacco social drinking uh, are regarded as habituating right we we all are habituated for having the tea so tea is also a chemical is a caffeine and caffeine is causing a one kind of habituation uh, to you right so we are habitual of taking it yeah, so these drug these things are the you know comes under habituation Uh, in in cases of that usually physical dependence is absent but in some cases physical dependence are also there people who don't take the tea 
uh, they start feeling headache so i don't know means the headache is really there but if it is there also it's a kind of physical dependence they have basically habituation and addiction imply different degree of psychological dependence so you, you understand this point very well habituation and addiction both are the actually psychological dependence right but the different degree of dependence in the addiction it is the highest degree of the psychological dependence in habituation milder degree of the dependence right means uh, uh, if you are uh, not taking the tea doesn't mean you will you will be seriously sick no right but uh, uh, in the case of addiction it happens right Therefore, it is better to avoid using these terms in describing drug dependence and related conditions. So, sometimes these uh, too much classification is very difficult to make it. So, these are called drug habituation. I don't know, maybe you know some examples that people are using the some kind of toothpaste or the tooth powders of uh, brushing their teeth with the tobacco mixed uh, uh, powders, right? So, this is simply a, a kind of uh, clean, uh, this is a product of cleaning their teeth, but you can find them they are dependent or habituated on that. So, you can find them uh, whole day, they, three to four times or five times, they are just brushing their teeth because they are not doing it for brushing the teeth, but is because they are getting a different effect of it. So, these are all the different uh, terms for the uh, habituation right different examples so i think by this you, you have understood all these terminologies and the different drug effects uh, drug uh, how these drugs are affecting and producing the various kind of effect in our body and uh, please remember these examples what i have quoted please go through the references what i have mentioned here it will help you out to understand more and thank you very much for uh, listening this video please uh, repeat it again and again so you can get a clear concept behind it and in the next class onwards, we will discuss only the receptor concept. Thank you very much.